Okay. Okay. Well, yeah, all of you know my name already. It's a Clarence Tool, and all I promised you all, I was gonna do a fresh story of what I all remember and what those fucking dicks did to me. And well, let me just start off by saying that a lot of you noticed that I'm going through a wicked depression already. And that kind of put me a step back of my recovery to going home. And this depression sucks, it does. It already got me on antidepressants. And, but my recovery is going good so far. And feeling a lot less pain now. As you can see, I still look all fucked up. <laughs> it's okay. Um, okay, well, anyways. On August 30th, well, I stayed up all night because, well, I had to watch the house. I was watching the house anyways because if anything happened, obviously I had to wake everyone up. I stayed up till like 6 or 7 in the morning on August 31st, went to bed, and well, as you all know, I woke up around 12.30 to 1 o'clock, I woke up to screaming outside, and I noticed my mom's friend Michelle Ammo and her daughter were standing outside screaming, looking at the house. I can't remember if they said they're screaming for me or just screaming looking at the house, but whichever one, they woke me up, it was very loud. And at the time, I didn't feel the heat of the fire or I didn't smell the smoke until I... Well, until I, I looked behind me, I was wondering what the fuck they were screaming at. And all I seen was a black wall of smoke and a little bit of fire. And as you all know, some people are saying I jumped out the window. I didn't jump out the window. Fuck that. I don't know why I didn't though. Anyways. The window was nailed shut. Well, it was stuck shut anyways. I'm not sure if it was nailed. Like, I couldn't open it. I don't know why I didn't bust it. But I did something that I don't think anyone can ever do. Well, well I grew a set of balls. And I closed my eyes. Took a deep breath. And I, I went running through the fire. Because, well, I thought the fire wouldn't catch me. But I guess it did. When I got there, on the first turn, when I t took the turn, I felt an explosion on the right side of my body, and it was very loud. It was very horrible, too. It was a horrible feeling. I I heard my skin, and I heard it sound like it was frying, and I was screaming so loud that Michelle and them, I think, heard me screaming in the house, and I was... I remember just trying to put myself out, but I kept catching on fire more upstairs in the house I was hitting the walls like because of well I was going crazy out up there trying to put the fire out then I got it I managed to make it to the stairs I took I took a step down like I was gonna run down but I get the top stairs broke and I rolled down the fucking stairs and I hit a dresser at the end and I think I broke my ankle or sprained it I don't know or fractured it but I went running out of the house though and they said they never seen anyone in so much pain and they go go through so much damage and still get up like that. Well, anyways, I got out of the house and I, I went running to Michelle and them. I was hoping they were going to put me out, but they kind of, obviously, I would do the same thing. I wouldn't want to go near anyone who's on fire because I don't want to catch fire, but I already did. So, I, I knew they weren't going to put me out, so I, I just dropped on the ground and learned did what I learned in school, you know, stop, drop, and roll, but that didn't help. I couldn't put myself out for some reason, but I felt my face burning so bad, and look, and now look what it done to me. So, when I couldn't put myself out, I got up again. I went running to the side of the house a bit, like kind of near the sidewalk. Then I started rolling again, and I finally got out, like put myself out, and I was... I was, I guess I was all kind of smoking, all, all cooked on the ground or something, but anyways, there was a lady there, I forget her name, but I want to say thank you to that lady who calmed me down, she kept me calm on the grass, because she was telling me to keep breathing, she was telling me all that, and I remember a lot of yelling, screaming, crying, my mom. She's seen me, seen me on the ground, all burnt to shit. And, well, I could imagine I wouldn't want to see my young one hurt like that, knowing that she can't do anything. 
And I remember Jermaine and them, Sean, they were crying. They're saying, who did this to you? And I was, I wasn't crying because I was in so much pain. I just yelled. I said, those fucking assholes Sean and Seamus did. And what did they do? My cousins right away, they went there. They went there. But anyways, it took a while for the paramedics to show up because I kept asking them, phone the fucking ambulance and no one phoned them yet. And they said, we're trying to. They said they can't get through, and then at that time I thought I was gonna die on the grass there. And then first the RCMP showed up. That's what that's what I remember. Then the fire department, and then the ambulance. Then I remember them coming up to me, telling me they're saying, "Clarence, we're gonna do something you're not gonna like or sorry." And then I said, "What are you gonna do?" And they said, "We're gonna lift you up and slide you onto a stretcher." And they said, "It's gonna hurt your back a lot, and we're sorry." And I said no, and they said we have to, and they didn't listen to me anyway, so. What they did was they kind of rolled me a bit onto my side, which kind of hurt, because I felt the skin rip off my back, because it was stuck to the grass. And they put that board underneath me, kind of a bit, so then they pushed me onto it, and it felt like, I was like, fuck, it felt like my whole back got drug burned, and it was wicked. It was a horrible thing. <laughs> so, I was rushed to the Dauphin General Hospital, around, I don't know, a quarter after one, maybe. And there was maybe about six, seven doctors working on me. I don't think any, I don't remember if any of my family were in there, but I don't think so. And my mom, she got there, she was there right away, but, cause I, cause she thinks she went to Bingo and they phoned her and said that there was an explosion at the house and Clarence was hurt. So, even after that, I told them when I was laying on the grass at the time, I told them all. Because I thought I was going to die. I told them, tell Kiara, tell Shania, I love them. And they told me not to talk like that because right away I thought for real, I thought I was going to go that day. So and then I just closed my eyes and I realized I was still breathing. And then those uh, paramedics came and they took me. And then again, anyways, I was at the general hospital and they were just working on me. My skin got so tight where they couldn't, they couldn't put needles in me because they were trying to sedate me. And the needles were breaking, bending, because my skin was so tight. So then I kept asking them if I was going to die. And they kept telling me to keep breathing, keep breathing. And I, wanna, I guess I wasn't listening to them, I was making like overwhelming myself and getting making it worse so my heart rate was picking up faster and my breathing I told them I'm starting to get heavy breathing and they noticed my I guess apparently they said my insides were starting to get crushed from being getting tightened so that day I remember them they didn't tell me what they were gonna do so I just noticed them trying to put something down my throat a tube and I, and I pulled it out myself and they told me not to do that. They got mad. They said they got to do it. Then I was like, so then I told them, I said, I'm getting tired. And they said, I just want to sleep. And they looked at me and I, I remember I was getting tired. I was very tired. And they just looked at me. They all stopped what they were doing and looked at me and just said, said uh, right away. They said, don't sleep, don't sleep, stay awake. I don't know what the hell that was. I don't know why he wanted to stay awake. If I slept, it probably would have felt better. Anyways. So that lady said, oh no, I blacked out and I think I was at the Dauphin General Hospital for about like two hours because that lady wouldn't, a lady there wouldn't let me leave without a, a breathing tube and I want to thank her too for for that. If she haven't got that breathing tube in my throat, I would have died. So I think my cousin Shana, she came in the helicopter or whatever they brought me in to the health science center at, I don't know which time I, I arrived, but that same day, Dr. Log said he took me into the operating room right away, and they operated on me. The first two days, I was sure they did two major grafts on me. It saved my life, oh, and Dr. Log said he's an awesome, awesome guy, I guess. He's a very awesome doctor, anyways. So, they did more than... 34, 36 cuts on my body just to keep expanding my stomach so I could breathe. Then they did two major cuts along my sides by my, by my ribs, under my arms. And yeah, 
from there I spent what is that a month and a half in a sedated coma in the SICU and how long was I in the SICU for uh, nine weeks ten weeks now I'm already recovering really fast and I'm in the burn unit now like, like I said recovering really fast but I still can't move my hands right you could see I still fingers are still gone <laughs> um, so they don't know when I'm going back as you can see my hair is still there I don't got no eyebrows sucks my lips all fucked up it's all swollen still but they said the way I look I'm not gonna look like this forever I'm gonna get my the shape of my face back they're making me garments like this sleeve I'm wearing it looks like a, like a cast around my arm that's actually like it's like a sleeve like a normal t-shirt sleeve but it's tight it's it's uh loosening up all my skin and all and that's they're gonna be making me a face mask next week which is gonna push pressure on my face to get the shape of my face back so I don't look all fucking Frankenstein like <laughs> my neck you can see just looks all fucked up I already have a neck brace for that I don't know why I'm not wearing it right now and I still have my ears they kinda look all like I said they look all fucked up I don't know. I don't know. I have no earlobes anyways, those are burned off, I still have the cartilage. <laughs> I think the my nose, you can see it kind of looks like it's fucking burnt off, but it's not. It's just got tiny from burning. <laughs> and I don't know what you guys think if I'm looking better or not to me. I just don't like looking in a reflection. Look, I'm looking at two cameras right now. And it sucks. So, I'm gonna say hi. And I'm doing better. And I'm trying to smile, so fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Smile harder. Yes, okay. Wait, this how you smile. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye.